Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Cert Bros. In this video, we're going to be talking about access control lists. So what is an access control list? Access control lists, also known as ACLs or simply access lists, are rule-based lists that are used by switches and routers to identify traffic. They can identify traffic based on the source address, destination address, and port numbers. The most common use for an access list is to deny or permit traffic, but there are other uses for access lists such as configuring network address translation and quality of service. Let's take a look at a quick example. This router has an ACL configured. The ACL is configured with rules that tell it which traffic is allowed to pass and which traffic is not. For example, we may want to allow all traffic destined for this server. But at the same time, we may want to block all other traffic to any other host. This is all possible with a very simple access list. OK, so now we have an idea about what an access list does. Let's see what one looks like. Here is a simple access list. It consists of one or more lines called rules which specify if traffic should be permitted or denied. Don't worry, we'll look at what each bit means in just a moment. The first thing you'll probably notice is the number on the left. This represents the order of each rule. The reason it goes up in tens is to give you the flexibility to come back at a later date and add rules in between the existing ones. Why does that matter? Well, the order of the list is very important. When a router or switch receives some traffic, it checks the access control list. It starts at the top of the list and it works its way down. It keeps going until it finds a matching rule. As soon as a matching rule is found, it stops looking and applies that rule. This means you have to be very careful to put the rules in the right place. Otherwise, you could deny traffic that you're trying to permit or permit traffic that you're trying to deny. We'll see this more as we go. Another very important note here is that if no matching rule is found, the traffic will automatically be denied. There is an invisible deny everything rule at the bottom of every access list. This is known as the implicit deny. Okay, so now we know what an access list does and what it looks like, now let's take a closer look. There are three types of access list. The first is a standard access list. Now, when you configure an access list, you use a number to identify the type of access list you want to configure. A standard access list uses any number between 1 and 99. Then Cisco decided to expand this to also include 1300 to 1999. This expansion meant we can configure a lot more access lists per device. Standard access lists only use the source address to identify traffic, so this can be quite limiting. The second type of access list is called an extended access list. Extended access lists uses any number between 100 and 199, and expanded numbers between 2000 to 2699. Extended access lists allow us to identify traffic not only on the source address, but the destination address, protocol, and port number as well. So we can have a lot more granular control with extended access lists. The last type I want to mention is called a named access list. A named access list allows standard or extended lists to be given names rather than numbers. If you have multiple access lists on a device, Named lists make it easier to identify what each list does, making them easier to manage. We're going to look at all three of these in a bit more detail. First, let's look at standard access lists. This is a command to configure a single standard access list entry. It can look a bit intimidating at first, so we're going to break it down. The first part specifies the access list number. Remember, any number between 1 and 99, or 1300 to 1999, means this will be a standard access list. 
The next part is the action. Do we want to permit this traffic or do we want to deny it? We then have our source IP address. And finally, something called a wildcard mask. Now the wildcard mask will need some further explaining. A wildcard mask works with an IP address. It's like an inverted subnet mask. The job of a wildcard mask is to identify the bits of an IP address that needs to match and the bits that don't. To do this, you need to compare the wildcard mask with the IP address. Wherever you see a zero, this means that corresponding bit must match. Wherever you see a one, this means the bit does not need to match. So in our example here, we have the address 192.168.10.0 and the wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255. This means it will match any traffic with the source address between 192.168.10.0 to 192.168.10.255. Because the wildcard mask states that the last eight bits don't need to match. So, to summarize this rule, it will permit any traffic coming from the source address 192.168.10. something. Okay, so that was nice and simple. Let's now look at an extended access list. This is a command to configure a single extended access list entry. As you can see, there is a bit more to it than the standard access list. Don't worry though, we're going to break it down. The first part specifies the access list number. Because we're now configuring an extended access list, we will use something between 100 and 199, or 2000 to 2699. The next part is the action. So this time we will be denying this traffic. Next we have a new section. This matches the traffic protocol. In this example, we have TCP, but this could be UDP, EIGRP, OSBF, etc. Then we have the source IP address, followed by the source wildcard mask. Then we have the destination IP address and the destination wildcard mask. After that, we have something called an operator. An operator is used to match port numbers. We have a few different operator options. GT means greater than. LT means less than. NEQ means not equal to. And EQ means equal to. Range means included in the range you specify. In this example, we're going to use EQ, which means equals to, and then we'll specify the port number. We can do this using the port number itself, or we can use a keyword for common ports. Here I typed FTP, meaning port 21. An important note here, when configuring an extended access list, the source IP and port number always comes first. Okay, so to summarize this rule, deny all TCP traffic coming from 192.168.10.something with a destination IP address of 192.168.20.50 and a destination port number of 21. The last one we need to look at is a named access list. Now luckily, named access lists are pretty similar. They're just configured slightly differently. The first thing you need to do is type IP access list. Then you specify if you want to configure a standard or an extended access list. Then you just need to choose a name. Here I've chosen Serpros for the name. Then you enter the access list configuration mode where you can add the rules in the same way as before. So this access list will deny any TCP traffic with a source IP address of 192.168.10.something with a destination IP address of 192.168.10.50 20.50 and a destination port number of 21, which is FTP. After that, it will permit any IP traffic with a source IP address of 192.168.10.something and a destination IP address of 192.168.20.50. Can you see the importance of having the correct order? If these two entries were the other way around, then FTP traffic would be permitted because the bottom rule would never be checked. 
So that is how you configure the three types of access list. But you also need to be able to read the lists. Let's take a look at a few examples and try and figure out what they do. Here's our first list. We know it's an extended list because, well, because it says extended at the top. But not only that, it also has a number of 101, which hopefully by now we know is an extended access list number. Below this, we have our list rules. The first one states, deny all TCP traffic destined for 192.168.10.something with a destination host address of 192.168.20.50 and the destination port number of 21. Now, access lists that have a 32-bit wildcard mask, or 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0, meaning one IP exactly, will show a host address. You can even use the keyword host when configuring it. The next rule is the same, but this time we are blocking telnet traffic. And the bottom one permits any IP traffic from 192.168.10.something with a destination host address of 192.168.20.50. Nice and easy, right? While the next one is even easier. This is a standard list. Of course, it says standard at the top, but it's also using a standard number. Remember, standard access lists only filter based on the source IP address. So this list is permitting traffic from host 192.168.10.10, 15, and .20. Remember, all access lists have an implicit deny at the bottom, so everything else will be denied. Okay, let's look at the last example. This is an extended access list, but this time it doesn't have a number. Instead, it has a name. The first rule permits TCP traffic, and there is a keyword here that we haven't seen yet. We can use the any keyword to specify any IP address. So in this case, any source IP. And then we have the destination host address of 192.168.20.50. And which port do you think www means? HTTP port 80. The second rule is the same, but it's permitting FTP traffic on port 21. Hopefully this has given you a good understanding of access lists, what they're used for, and the different types. This video is part of the full CCNA course which can be found in the description, so please feel free to go and check that out. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. The support from you guys really helps this channel grow. Other than that, thank you for watching.